Coach Z spent 25 years as a college basketball coach and developed a reputation as a rebuilder of programs. Through his experiences, he learned how to turn adversity into advantage. He became the youngest Division I basketball coach at the tender age of 27 when he was hired at St. Francis College in New York. And in 2002, he became one of only 35 active coaches to win Coach of the Year honors in two different Division I conferences at two separate schools. Currently, he's an analyst on ESPN and the Big Ten Television Network. He's also found time to appear in six films, including Along Came a Spider and an episode of Friday Night Lights. And in October, he'll release his first book entitled Bird Dogs and Kangaroos, Life on the Back Roads of College Basketball. March 13th is my birthday. I tell you that for a couple of reasons. The first reason is to let you know that there are only 225 more shopping days for you to find the right gift for me. I also tell you that for another reason. Because think back to your birthdays. Your birthdays are always fun. They're always good. Your 16th birthday, you got a chance to drive. Your 21st birthday, well, actually, 18th birthday, you, got, you were legal, you were allowed to go into bars. I know that changed a little bit. Think about the gifts you've gotten over the years. You've gotten some great gifts. For the last 10 years, I've gotten some ties from my kids, some good, some, some bad. Dinosaur ties really aren't me, but the thought was there. Two years ago, I got the greatest gift on my birthday. I didn't think so at the time, but since then, I've realized it was. You see, I got called into my boss's office. I was the head coach of the University of Missouri, Kansas City. We had a new athletic director. He called me in. I thought, hey, we're going to talk about the future of the program. Well, we did. He called me in, slid a piece of paper across the desk, and said to me, we've decided to go in a different direction. You're fired. OK, it's my birthday. How can you fire me on my birthday? But you know what he did for me? He gave me three great gifts that day. The first one was, Gives me a great story. I mean, how many people get fired on their birthday? It gave me a great opening for my book. Happy birthday, you're fired. I mean, think about it. If it happened the day before, nobody would have cared, you know. Hey, you know what, Brian? I got fired the day before my birthday. Man, you're a big deal. Who cares, you know? But on my birthday, I got fired. The second thing he did for me was, by firing me, I left there as the all-time winningest coach. God knows if I had come back another year, I would have screwed that up. And the third thing is, he gave me a chance to do something different. He gave me a chance to really see what's out there. For 25 years, I had coached. I loved it. I, don't, don't get me wrong. I loved coaching. I loved around, being around kids. I loved the impact. And one of the things that I, I always told my kids was, how do you handle adversity? How do you handle adversity? You put your head down. You put your tail between your legs. Or you try and use it to your advantage. Now, through 25 years of coaching, I never was at a Duke or a Kansas or an Iowa State, an Iowa. We played them a few times, but never got a chance to coach there. I've always been at places that needed rebuilding or needed starting. My first job, St. Francis College, Brooklyn. Now, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. Brooklyn was a new experience for me. St. Francis College, one city block, commuter school, seven stories, gym on the third floor. A little different, right? Had not had a winning season in two decades. Nobody wanted the job. That's why I got it at age 27. Who are you kidding? It was a real, real rebuilding job. I just didn't realize how much of a rebuilding job. We had alums talking about in 1960, we went to the NIT. I wasn't even born in 1960. Had one winning season in eight years. I learned some, some valuable lessons there. I learned about teamwork. I learned about sharing the ride. I learned about impacting others. We had a game, kind of put it in perspective. We played Kansas State one year. We beat them by 41. First time they'd ever beaten Kansas State. Unbelievable game. Next day, phone rings. Daughter picks up the phone. I'm upstairs shaving. Hey, Dad, Sports Illustrated's on the phone. Sports Illustrated, for me, I mean, it's a big time. We just beat kids. Just pick up the phone. Ready for my interview, right? Hello. And I, and I hear on the other end of the line, your subscription to Sports Illustrated. So I learned a little bit about humility there. But 
the biggest thing, and I, and I, I want to share this with you, teamwork, okay? The value of teamwork, and, it, and it's how you approach people. I heard a great saying years ago, you can't heat an oven with snowballs. Well, my daughter taught me a lesson on that. My daughter was about nine, month old, nine months old at the time. I come home from practice. There she is. She's sitting in her high chair. My wife is trying to feed her the orange stuff. It was awful. You know, the baby food. It's, it's, it's horrible. Well, there was really nothing in her. It was on the floor, on the wall, on my wife, nothing in the kitchen. So I'm the coach. I, I can get it done. So I'm going to show her who's boss. I tell my wife, hey, honey, just leave the kitchen. I'll get it done. So I look at my daughter. I grab the orange stuff. I say, okay, what's, what's my plan of attack? All right. I'm going to bully her. I'm bigger. I'm older. I'm wiser. So first thing I do is, what, is, what have you ever done when your kid won't eat? Take three scoops. Put it in your mouth. Mmm, -hmm, this is good. And then go to put it in hers. Well, she took a look at me like, hey, you like it so well. Why don't you finish the jar? Well, she made her second decision after she wasn't going to eat. She wasn't going to open her mouth. Well, you know what? I did what I'm sorry to say a lot of parents do. I squeezed her little cheeks till her mouth popped open. Shoved three spoonfuls in, clamped her mouth shut. I got it done. Well, you know what? She made her third decision. Die by holding her breath rather than swallow. So she held her breath. I thought, okay. I look at my watch. Ten seconds, fifteen. I looked at her, you know. Turned a little blue, but it's okay. I looked, I said, hey, I got two other kids. I'm not worried. <laughs> so I got a little close. And then finally she made her last decision. As I got really close, like, to try and get her to swallow, she exhaled. And as she exhaled, my nose was right by her mouth. It went out her mouth, in my nose, down my throat. I fell on the floor gagging. And just then my wife walked back in. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, this is... Happened to married couple. Well, she said this. Well, actually, she didn't say anything. I just kind of walked out. And as I walked out, I just told her, you know what? She doesn't like the orange stuff. Feed her the green stuff. And I learned a valuable lesson. That is, you can't bully people if you're going to if you're going to develop teamwork. Last story that I want to tell you, and that is sharing the ride, making an impact. A couple of years ago, we start the season 0 and 7. 0 and 7. I got my athletic director coming in to me saying, hey, I'm getting pressured to fire you. I got newspaper reporters writing articles about why I should be fired. It, it wasn't a very good time. Okay, fine. We're 0-7. But I think we got a pretty good team. So it really comes down to believing in yourself, all right? And at that point, I decided to share the ride. We're in Indianapolis. And we're sitting in a hotel room. My parents drove over from Cleveland, Ohio to see the game. Not in a very good mood, but something hit me. My father was a high school coach for 20 years. That's probably why I became a coach. And I said, you know what? In 25 years of coaching, 16 as a head coach, I had never asked him to come in the locker room. I had never asked him to be really, to be a part of it. We talked about it, about the game and, and practice and that, but never really been a part of it. So that day I made a decision. You're coming in the locker room with me. He said, you're going on a team bus. You're going to be in the locker room the whole time, sit on the bench. End of the game, go back to the hotel and the bus. So he did. And we won. We won. Well, I'm a superstitious guy. So two days later, we're playing at home. So I tell my, tell my dad, listen, I got a ticket, Southwest Air, we're flying you out on Saturday of the game. I can't screw with the basketball guy. Karma's on my side. We're one in seven, right? So he comes out. We win the second game. Now, Two days later, we're going down to Shreveport, Louisiana, and play Sentinel. I'm telling him, listen, I got a ticket. You're going with us. Now, the most embarrassing thing I've ever seen in my life, my father, who's been married to my mother for 60 years, come, come December, is on the phone with her trying to, actually, he was begging that he go down to Shreveport with his son to the game. And, and I'm like, I can't believe you have to beg, but they hadn't been apart for a while. She relented after I told her that I would keep him out of the casinos. <laughs> we go down to Centenary. We win that one. We come home. We had a, kind of an NBA stretch. So, so I had decided at that point that if we won this game, that he would give the post-game talk. I didn't tell him this. So as fate would have it, 
we won the fourth game. We're in the locker room. Everybody is gathered around. I tell my father, Dad, I'd like you to give the post-game address. You know, I'm thinking, hey, he's got the new Rockney speech in his back pocket. He was a coach for 20 years. He can get this done. He comes in. Players are all gathered around. He looks at him. He says, I've taken you as far as I can. The rest is up to you. <laughs> 